and today I'm reviewing the Hawk Optics Vantage IR rifle scope. This is a rifle scope, it's a budget rifle scope, but this particular one has a reticle design for this 22 subsonic round. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to share my initial thoughts and feedback and we're going to test out how reliable that reticle is on this scope. Alright, let's get into it. So this scope is a budget scope. It cost me $350 New Zealand. It's $190 US dollars. So it's it's definitely on the lower end scale, but it does come with some pretty neat features. You have um, illumination, five, five brightness settings for illuminated reticle, and that comes in both red and green um, illumination, which is neat. You have quarter, quarter MOA uh, windage and elevation turrets. Like I said, a three to nine times zoom. This they, you can also get this particular um, reticle in a 4 to 12, which is only about 20 or 30 dollars more expensive, and, and that's what I would have preferred, but I couldn't get it here in New Zealand. And then you can go right up to a 4 to 16, which is about double the price. Um, I didn't, I don't like that for a 22 um, because I want to use this as more of a pest control um, rifle, not purely target shooting. And um, for the reticle for the drops to work on the reticle you have to be at full zoom and so 16 times if you're shooting say 100 yards you know that's it's getting a bit crazy if, if that animal moves so um yeah the 4 to 12 was probably the best even that though you're probably pushing it 3 to 9 is actually is actually perfect now that I, now that i say it all out loud um, i've got this fitted on my ruger 1022 um on a magpul stock with a volkortsen trigger uh, i use this for like i said for for small game pest control, bit of plinking, bit of target practice. Um, you know, it's my all around sort of 22 rifle. Uh, I needed a new scope for another 22, and um, yeah, I saw these and I thought, hey, that could be a bit of fun. I will shoot, you know, anything from 10 yards through to 100 yards, maybe a bit more for for a smaller game. And um, I know ideally you'd be using drop charts and adjusting, and that's exactly what I do for my my centerfire hunting rifles. And if I'm getting serious with 22 target shooting for instance but what i found is um when i'm shooting these pests it's it's often by chance like oh you know th there's a there's a rabbit like and you don't have time to range dial and adjust and all of that and um so in the past what i just do is i just hold over just think all right i think that's about 80 yards or 100 yards i should be about here it works okay but it's um you know I, I miss probably more than i get when it when i'm just rushing a shot like that especially when you're you're having to guess both range and guess where you should be holding over so the thing i like about this scope is you still have to guess that range but um at least your holdovers are sort of fixed in here because you've got it all on screen or on the reticle which is neat now um one other thing i should mention i know there's a lot of assumptions with a um a scope like this and i know there'll be purists out there and you know guys that i read and follow and 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 take a lot of advice from uh and they're going to be shaking their heads and disgust but um Again, hey, it was a bit of fun. It was not too expensive. And for the reasons I just mentioned before, I was like, hey, if this works, it will be pretty handy. So I know things like muzzle velocity for the round is going to be completely different at different elevations, different locations, temperatures, different um, barrels. Like I've got a little suppressor on here. You know, there's so many variables at play. Um, and even the rounds you use, unless you're using match grade rifle uh, ammunition, which is very, very consistent performance. There's so much variability involved. And, um, so don't take this as like a super serious scientific review or, or, or test or anything like this. Hawk Optics, uh, UK born company, uh, they offer lifetime guarantee on their scopes. You can get this in high velocity 22 reticles. So, you know, for your regular um, 22 rounds, you can also get it for 17 HMR and 22 Magnum. I think they also do reticles for 20 two to three as well. I'm not too sure if they go above that on the center fire um, range. You've got a no fault lifetime warranty, which is great, all caliber rated, but the reticle's for a 22 subsonic. So, you know, I doubt you'd be using this on something else. Um, fixed parallax is 75 yards, which is a bit of a bummer, especially if you're gonna use it for closer shots. So that's something I'll, I'll test soon as well. And the wind's just blowing off my target, bummer. Now the ammunition that the reticle is designed for, they didn't give a particular or specific ammunition. Instead, they just say a 22 round firing, uh, a 22 round flying at 1,057 feet per second. So I got a bunch of subsonic rounds here. I got um, some Winchester subsonic round, 40 grain. That is got a velocity of 1,065 feet per second. So a little bit higher, but pretty close. CCI standard, which is very popular around and something that I use quite a bit that one is very strong um, I use quite a bit and in, including in this round it's very consistent and quite accurate um, that is 1070 feet per second 
And CCI standard velocity, oh sorry, CCI subsonic. Now this is a hollow point round, so it's more of a hunt, hunting round. This is 1050, which is the closest out of the three and only a few feet per second off. Um, because I'm gonna be using this for, for hunting, like small game, uh, uh, varmint sort of shooting, um, and because this closely aligns with the reticle on here, I'm gonna go with this. Even though I know the standard velocity would be more accurate and more consistent from a velocity point of view. All right, here we go. 50 yards uh, shooting off a bench, yes. And um, there is a bit of a breeze. I just wanna control for as many variables as possible. Uh, shooting CCI subsonic. <clears throat> All right, so let's go down to the 50 and see how they were shooting. So this is 50 yards. And um, yeah, not too bad. Those three in the middle, I swear to God, they were my first three shots, but I forgot to film on the uh, spotting scope. So yeah, it's not too bad. That's it's a pretty good group for a hunting round. Um, quite impressed with that, actually, especially in these conditions. But you know, that's not what the test is about today. The test is to see how good this scope is um, when we push it out to further distances. So I'm gonna go down to the 100 yard now. Uh, we'll put this target up and then have a shot with that and then we'll move over to the 200 yard gong. All right, so now we're up to 100 yard. Zoom in on here. I'm gonna be aiming for the bottom ring, not the main center ring with the big black bullseye. Uh, the one slightly below there. Might help if I put a round through there. Last one was a bit of a fly. But hey, if you look at that, it's not too bad. All right, here we are, 100 yards. Let's flip around. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, aiming for this uh, spot here. So a little bit low. I mean, we're nearly an inch low there. Um, these two, all right. This one, I think, was that flyer at the end. I'm not too sure, but there was definitely one flyer in there. Um, the last shot, I mean. I mean, pretty good. I mean, if that was, what have we got there? This is 100 yards. So if you take that one out, Take that bottom shot out. It's one and a half inch grouping for a 22 in high wind uh, with hollow point rounds. Not too bad. But again, that's not what, what we, I keep getting distracted here. The main thing is how reliable that reticle is. And uh, I have to say that that's pretty good. Uh, pretty good. All right, so I've actually went and set up a, a little spinning plate at 150 yards. So um, I'm going to have a crack at that uh, it wasn't on the original plan so we'll have a crack at that the wind's still pretty strong here so we'll a few shots at that and then we'll move over to the 200 so uh, let's see how this goes all right got that on screen it was a little bit high it was just off to the side it's a hit quite low well I mean low on the plate another hit just off to the side though elevation's all pretty good the ones I'm missing is are pretty close um, it's only a I think it's a three inch gong. Maybe, maybe, yeah, I think it's a three inch gong that I'm aiming for, the big one. Um, but as you can see from that wind, it's, it's not helping. But the good thing is elevation's pretty good. And that's what I'm really looking for here. One shot, one hit. Miss. Miss. 
Two from three. Miss. Miss. It's about a 50% strike rate, but the ones I'm missing are, um, look like elevation is good. It's just, they're just coming off to the side and wind's playing a big role, contributing factor in that. Just missed. All right, so here we are out to 200. Now that breeze is picking up and it's blowing right across, which is a bummer. Previously, I was aiming down this line and um, the wind was coming towards me. So it's, I know that's gonna throw me off big time. The main thing I wanna see though is the drop, the elevation, where it's hitting. That's what the reticle's accounting for. Obviously, the, the bullet drop. Um, so we'll try shoot when there's a bit of a gap in the wind, but um, it's gonna be interesting. The only other thing is, with all the other shots, from 53 to 175, there is a nice little cross here on the reticle. For 200, you actually get a point. Now I'm assuming it's the tip of the point, um, but it could be, yeah, oh, it will be interesting. Let's uh, let's see how we go. There's a slight pause in the wind now, so. Bang, bang. It's always a nice sound. I don't know where it was hitting there. Bang, bang. Pretty good. We'll go over and see exactly where these rounds are hitting. So now what I'm doing is I'm just playing around to see where this, um, crosshair is meant to be on the gong and I think the point is hitting quite low so we're going to move up a little bit yeah So as you can see, I mean, there's, there's a few shots scattered around there. You can't really read too much into the grouping here because I was adjusting my um, aim, you know, for the wind and obviously different height and elevation and stuff as well. So, I mean, hey, yeah, we're hitting it. Obviously, if it's a rabbit out at that distance, chances it's going to get, the chances are it's going to get away uh, given the spread. But, I mean, remember though, this is a... 200 yard shot with a 22 subsonic 22 using hollow point you know hunting ammunition it's not match ammunition it's not a match grade gun uh, or anything like that and that breeze coming through the gully there was quite strong so yeah i mean hey the main thing i wanted to look at was how reliable those drops are i i have to back up because it's getting far too cold and the wind uh, and the wind is just picking up as well i can say pretty reliably though that 50 if you're zeroed in at 50 you're 100 and thus probably a 75 125 are going to be bang on maybe even 150 uh, when you're getting out to that 175 200 yard mark then obviously there's there's a bit more variability at play but those are big shots for a rimfire you know subsonic round like i've just mentioned overall um what i think of the scope i mean hey i did used to have a nico sterling on here and um that was a lower cost budget um lower cost scope as well i think the lens was better on the nico sterling than this this isn't it's nothing amazing especially um you know comparing it to some of the high-end scopes i have but you know for a couple hundred bucks it's not uh it's not end of the world it is nice that you've got that illumination feature though as well uh, my other scopes didn't have that you know on this on this rifle i did look at some um trees only 10 15 yards away to see if that parallax was an issue and it wasn't obviously i had to dial back the zoom but uh, that was okay uh, so that's good to know what way will i keep using the scope I, I think i will i mean because i wanted something where i can just pick it up and be like hey there's a you know there's a rabbit at 75 yards or thereabouts and fire away um I can use it at night time, low light with illumination, and I know that, yeah, those those markings on the scope are pretty good. Sure, if I'm pushing it out to 200 yards, maybe not, but hey, that's going to be a tricky shot anyway. So um, we'll leave it there. I hope you've enjoyed this 
video it's a little bit different for me but hey this is something i wanted to do so i thought oh well, let's get it get the cameras out and record it um be sure to check out my other videos i do lots of other reviews if you want to see more of these types of videos let me know if you have used this scope um, or something similar in the hawk product range uh be sure to leave your comments below as well and um yeah otherwise we'll see you next time bye